we're looking at how to create and use spin buttons and in these videos how to use code to create spin buttons quickly. Let's get back into the spreadsheets and we can see we have multiple buttons here. We've created uh, some code in module two, the duplicate spin button code. And we're trying to understand what code we need to automate the process. So we can just click this code, all of the buttons will be created and all of the buttons will link to the correct cells. So we're, we're about halfway through it. And so far uh, we can create uh, a button and get the button positioned in the right place. But of course, we don't want to just create a single button, we want to create multiple buttons. So in, in this, this video, we're going to look at building a loop into this code to create multiple uh, buttons. Firstly, I'm gonna clear out the existing buttons using this uh, delete spinners code. I run that and we're down to one button again. At the same time, I'm going to put this option explicit command at the top of the second model, the second module. What does option explicit do? Well, it means you have to be clear about defining your variables. To create the loop, we're gonna need a loop to create multiple buttons. We're going to have to define a variable to manage how many times to go through that loop. Option explicit means we have to be explicit about the variables. Option explicit will check for any spelling mistakes in the variables that otherwise would be difficult to pick up if we didn't have option explicit in there. So it's usually a good idea to put option explicit at the top uh, of your modules. So let's get on to uh, the loop. Uh, so how many buttons uh, do we need? Well, we, we're gonna want want to run through the loop, you know, eight or nine times it looks like, but we can, you know, make that precise later. So let's just assume uh, nine times. And we're going to need uh, a variable to help us manage how many times to go through the loop. So to declare the variable, you can say dim, then give uh, the variable a name. I like to give variables, I think it's good practice to give variables meaningful names. I've called this counter. That's because it's counting how many times to go through the loop. And then this is going to be an integer variable uh, because it's uh, a whole number. And there we go, that should do the job. And then we can say a for next loop should do the job here. So let's say for counter equals one to eight, so that's going to run through the loop eight times. And then after the code, um, we're going to close the loop here, just with the line of code next counter. So that's the basic way to create a loop, declare a variable, and then in this case, for next is going to be fine. So we need a line of code to open the loop, a line of code to close the loop, and then the code that's inside the loop will run a certain number of times, and we've uh, set this to eight times. So let's see what happens. Let's just give this code uh, a go. I'm gonna step into it using the F8 key. And there we go, we've got buttons being created, and you can see that the buttons are being lined up uh, on top of each other. So this is good in the sense we're creating multiple buttons, that's what we want to do, but it's bad in the sense that um, they are all being positioned on top of each other. So we need to think about how can we adjust these lines of code that position the buttons? How can we adjust these lines of code to get them lining up, stacking up the buttons on top of each other? How might we do that? Well, I'm gonna go back to module one, just clear out uh, the buttons. And yeah, this line of code here, uh, is interesting. So this B8 reference, cell B8, all of the buttons are being lined up with cell B8. What do we actually want to do? Well, let's try to express that in English first. Uh, we want the first button to be lined up with cell B5, the second one to be lined up with cell B6, the third one to be lined up with cell B7. So that number, the second part of the cell reference, five, six, seven, eight, is going up each time we go through the loop. So every time we go through the loop, we want this eight uh, to increase in value by one, uh, beginning with five all the way up to 13. How might we do that? Well, this I think is the really difficult part to understand, uh, but this is where we can use the variable 
to achieve uh, this effect. So how is this going to work? Um, well, let's just try it. Uh, you can see I've deleted the eight and put the B in speech marks, and then I'm going to use an and sign uh, to connect the reference to a variable. That's what the and sign does. It's done it, gonna connect the text string, the reference to a variable. Now the variable we're going to use, well, the only variable we have in our code is counter. Okay, there we go. And then I'm gonna repeat the same line of code below, just copy paste. So recycling existing code is generally good practice. So what's this going to do? Uh, well, let's clear out uh, the buttons first, and then I'm going to step into this code and then just keep an eye on the spreadsheet on the left. I'll use the F8 key to step through the code. Um, so the button is being created. That's good. And then what's happening now? The button's gone right up to the top there. You can just see it and then execute this line of code. Okay, so the button is actually being aligned with cell B1. Why is that? Well, if you just position the mouse pointer over the variable, Excel will tell you the current value of the variable and counter equals one. So um, you can translate that into range B1.top. That's exactly what's happened. Excel has aligned the button with B1, but Next time we go through the loop, you can see the value of counter is now two. So Excel is going to line up the button with cell B2, B3, and you'll see the buttons are just coming down. That's because the value of the variable increases by one every time we go through the loop. That is helping us to position the button. So this technique, so common in coding, so useful, harnessing the variable, that's increasing by one each time you go through the loop, harnessing that to do something in the spreadsheet. In this case, we're positioning objects in the spreadsheet. But we can also say it's not quite right yet. We don't want the buttons right up at the top, but we can make um, a simple tweak to the code to get this working. We want the first button we create, we want it to appear in cell B5. But the first time at the moment, the first time Excel goes through the loop, we're gonna to go to cell B1, because counter equals one. But what if we did counter plus four? Let's try that, counter plus four in these two lines of code. Again, I'm gonna clear out the existing buttons. Okay, let's, let's give this a go. So F8 key, stepping through the code. We can see the buttons are appearing there, lining up really nicely. Now that's because we've included this number here, counter plus four. That means that rather, start, rather than starting at row one, we've got counter plus four, so it's starting at row five. That's exactly what we want it to do. We just made a little tweak to the code and it seems to be working well. I'm gonna play this code now. We can see we've got down to row 12, so that tells me a small tweak is needed. Uh, counter from one to nine, change that value from eight to nine, that means Excel is going to go through the loop uh, one more time. So let's give this a go now. Okay, seems to be good. Clear out the uh, buttons once more. Let's try it one more time, play the code. Okay, there we go. So the buttons are appearing, lining up beautifully, and it's here that we understand why it was so important initially to make the first button line up really nicely with the cell. Remember, I used the Alt key when I was creating the button to make it snap to the grid, to make it line up really nicely with the cell. Now we can see why that is, is so important. All of these buttons lining up really nicely, neat and tidy presentation, which is what we're looking for. However, there's still a problem here. If we click on these buttons, what's going to happen? Well, we can see they're all linked to cell D4. That's because our first button, and remember we're copy and pasting this first button, our first button is linked to cell D4. So as we copy paste those buttons, we've got to find a way to change the cell link. So how might we do that? That's something we're gonna, uh, something to think about and something we're gonna look at in the next video. I'll see you then.